Well, we kept promising it, and now we're going to do it. Uh, we said if we had some really big news, and I can't imagine bigger news than Lincoln Riley and staff, uh, Doug Belk and Eric Henderson doing some dog work today. Uh, USC flips five-star Justice Terry from Georgia, also picking um, up Isaiah Gibson, uh, number one edge rusher, four-star um, coming in. And then also uh, to add a little cherry on top, Doug Belk goes out and brings us in a four-star uh, cornerback in uh, Dominic Kelly. So, uh, Matt, amazing day, right? I pulled Matt away from the NCAA tournament for a little bit. I know he's running a bunch up on that, but we had to jump on. We told you guys we would do this. We got a big day, and here we are. Matt, how you, what do you think is going on right now? Woof, 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 woof. Dog work, yeah, dog work baby. Dog work. <laughs> Yeah, it can't get any better than uh, waking up on Sunday and get, seeing those emojis start flying, right? We saw Andy Hansen flip that first emoji up, and then we saw more from the sports staff popping up those emojis. Uh, you knew it was going to be a great day. And uh, it, it is, you know, it's always a great day to be a Trojan. I got a suspicion, though, this first call we have here, Matt, I t just didn't sound like a Trojan to me. Hi, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Daniel Gaines from Houston, Texas. What was your name, Daniel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Daniel from Houston. Daniel, how are you doing tonight? Or today, I guess. Sorry. Whoops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, you know, working, looking over, uh looking over your social media. I'm just just amazed how excited y'all get over having a you know, a little sleazy snake as a as a coach. Which you know, here here's my thing, is is y'all think it's so great, right? And then you, you everyone has to say, Oh, Oklahoma don't get over it. Oklahoma, you know, blah, blah, blah. Look, here here's the thing. When somebody comes, right, and steals from you and pretty much skips in your yard, do you forgive them? Or do you just say, Hey, you know what? That going down the road to the next house. Maybe in California y'all do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I'm pretty sure y'all 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 let that fly. Yeah. But you know, where I'm from in Oklahoma, we, we sure don't let that fly. There's He's no not stealing, a great huh? Coach. Nah, not nah, well. Okay, so go keep going, Daniel. Perform in Oklahoma, you sir. When you cannot perform in Oklahoma, you got to go somewhere else. Mm, okay. So anyway, uh, was, and, and, and you know that. So when the Big 12 over and over again, was that not performing in Oklahoma? I mean, all those Heisman Trophy winners, was that not performing in Oklahoma? All those number one NFL draft picks, that was not performing in Oklahoma? Um, do you call what's going on right now performing? Just let me know. What do you think about Oklahoma's performance right now? Uh, uh, so 10-3 and three is pretty good from mm -hmm. uh, 6 and 7. You know, And it's not great, and no Oklahoma is nowhere where they need to be. But, you know, we're putting the building blocks together. And, and, and I'm in reality of thinking, you know, SEC is tough. Shoot, it might be 10 years before well, we win a conference. Hey, Daniel, listen. I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to. I'd love to hear this, but, you know, but we don't have time for this. You know, we're celebrating flipping a five-star from Georgia. And we have a four-star coach. But he's not even going to. He's not even going to be. He's not even going to be there very long. Really? Because he's, he's not going to. Oh, he won't. He won't. No? Okay. There's, no, there's no honor amongst these. And y'all y'all will find that out. Got you. Okay, well, listen, yeah, um, uh, oh, Matt, do you need to say what's going Daniel? Yeah, that, that seems, you know, apparently, Daniel, it's it's 2024, and y'all still haven't got over it. So, apparently, you're calling into my show, getting angry about Lincoln Riley. Uh, it, it, what, years later now, and you're trying to tell us we need to get over stuff? I, I don't I don't think it's us that need to get over it, but we'll take the no next one. Thank you for no one at USC has been mentioning or thinking about Oklahoma for the past several months. Like, that is, that's off the radar. Yeah, no, absolutely. I got this on a day like today. I want to give him a chance. We let we let everybody um, talk here. This is the opportunity. Yeah, we took his call. Man, he said peace, and here we go. Love to hear it. Sorry, you're still bitter after two years, but appreciate the call. Call anytime, Daniel. Uh, next caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? My name's Aaron, and uh, I'm calling from uh, Indio, California. Aaron, thanks for calling in on on a very very happy Sunday. What are your thoughts today? Yeah, super excited, man. I mean, obviously waking up, seeing those two commitments from Georgia. But I was just thinking, man, like with NIL, and I was kind of like worried and a lot of USC fans if we we're going to make that switch to drop in the bag. But it seems like they dropped the bag already, but on coaches. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that was Lincoln Riley's plan the whole time. Like, we're not going to play that high school game or whatever, but we're just going to drop the bag on these coaches, get the best defensive staff we can. 
get to developing these guys and that's what kids are going to commit because like the kids that are going to be at the top like the justice terry's isaiah gibson they know they're going to they're going to they're gonna go to the nfl but they need that you know that coaching staff to develop them so it seems like they went all in on dropping the bag to these coaches so that we can get development and it's flowing right now you know so i'm excited to see kind of all these other commitments that are going to come because they know that they're going to get developed and it's going to be these top guys because they already know that they have this dream to get to the NFL. You know, so I you, think they're willing to wait. And let's yeah, just you, step in. Let's you you step, nailed let's it, Aaron. Step in with this, yeah. Let's just step in with this keynote. I mean, Aaron Donald, one, goes to USC, pays a visit. He's on campus, number one. Number two, he gives a testimonial about how great Eric Henderson is at developing players and coaching. Wow, like that that's just two massive developments for USC in terms of its defensive line recruiting right there. So like and people at US, you know, USC fans here at the Voice of College Football, USC fans everywhere were wondering, oh, can we get Aaron Donald as a defensive analyst? Hey, he just he just did his recruiting job for USC. He doesn't we don't need to pay him. He he already did it, you know, through the goodness of his heart. So like we, we, you know. Save that money for the NIL <laughs> and that that investment. Aaron Donald has already done his bit uh, in a very big way for USC. The visit and the testimonial about Coach Henny. So like that, that is just huge. And now you're seeing this tidal wave. And one would have to think that this train is only beginning to get rolling. Woof, woof. Yeah, I, I like I really do like what we're, we're seeing. I mean, we knew this was going to I mean. We didn't, we just knew you, you did just know because they kept talking development, development, development. And I know USC, by the way, as much as we want to say that there, that the NIL is lagging behind, it may have been lagging behind, but everything we've been hearing is that this caught up. Uh, people I trust have told me that, that they're competitive. It's not the money wasn't there. It was a strategy. And you know, the, the playing field, you guys, if you're paying attention to the national media has changed. The national news is showing that the NCAA is a feckless organization that's capricious, uh, makes all these threats, rat, you know, the saber rattling about we're going to get the people for inducing players and then nothing, right? Tennessee just basically showed you, you guys are nothing. And so basically, uh, I think now USC can be more aggressive, pivot to more aggressive NIL. And I think, by the way, although I think your point is very astute, they threw the money at getting top coaches. And what's one word we heard besides vers uh, versatility? We kept hearing development, development, development. And you heard in his uh, in his announcement that uh, I'm sorry, it was in an interview with 247 that he's coming here because he wants to be developed by Eric Henderson. So now, again, like you said, the, the money going into coaching is what's paying off dividends now. Excellent call, Aaron. Anything else for us? No, man. It's fight on. Love your guys' show. I'll be calling more. Absolutely. Hey, listen, appreciate your call. Definitely call him. We love our first time callers. I hope you call back next week. All right, guys, that opens up a new line, uh, a phone line for you guys. So make sure you're calling in. If you're just joining us, we're celebrating a great Sunday. USC uh, flips the commitment of uh, five-star Justice Terry, defensive lineman from Georgia. Uh, we're starting to see the, uh, the the immediate effect, the Eric Donald's words, but more, more importantly, just a kind of tenacious recruiter and, and developer of relationships we have with Eric Henderson as our new coach. Just a, an, an amazing set of events today. This kind of training. You actually just saw the emojis coming out. Then it was followed up by edge rusher uh, Isaiah Gibson. We don't really have edge rushers in in um, in Lynn's uh, offense or defense, but it's going to be more of like a defensive end. Dude, we're seeing talent coming in. And then the cherry on the cake uh, today again was when we get uh, Dominic to go ahead and give his uh, – Dominic Kelly give his uh, commitment. So that's three from the state of Georgia, and we love it. And by the way, uh, 247 – um uh uh sorry i'm trying to think of his name i'm blanking out um 10k oh my gosh i know his nickname more than i know his actual name Trevino. Trevino. yeah chris Trevino uh said a great text basically saying that uh you know it's it's just the whole state of georgia and i was only going back to last year but he went all the way back to 2022 with garrison madden, madden the, the speedy linebacker but then like last year you had um walter matthews a tight end from uh, Georgia, we have Big Cam Fountain. We're seeing pictures of him, and then uh, Lorenzo Cowan. So I mean, you're talking about a bunch of guys that are going to join uh, Justice Terry and uh, Isaiah Gibson up front there, you know, in that front seven. So it's just a big nasty group. And again, adding Dominic Kelly is just one more piece of that. You guys.
give us a call. Uh, 888-997-4539, 888-99-RILEY. We are celebrating a great day here at USC that we knew was going to happen. Matt, anything else to add about just a crazy whirlwind of events that happened today? Well, you know, I'm just kind of thinking about the big picture. And, you know, on one hand, Lincoln Riley should have, you know, made a lot of these changes uh, a year ago. And, and we don't need to go deep into the weeds on that point. But, you know, one thing that couldn't have happened one year ago was Eric Henderson, right? Because Aaron Donald was still playing. And, and it's worth re-emphasizing the point that Aaron Donald retiring had to have opened the door for Eric Henderson to make this move. And like that had to have been discussed between Aaron Donald and Coach Henny, you know, late in the Rams season, because it would seem odd, right? That you would walk away from being the defensive line coach of the Los Angeles Rams while Aaron Donald, arguably the greatest defensive lineman ever, is still active and playing. You know, you you don't walk away from that kind of job for you know an equivalent position, defensive line coach at USC. Now, if Eric Henderson had a a defensive coordinator job or or a head coaching job, okay, you walk away from coaching Aaron Donald for that. So you know, you know, in retrospect, in terms of the timeline, Aaron Donald retiring just made made everything seem so much clearer about why Eric Henderson was willing to make this move to USC. And again, that couldn't have happened a year ago. So in many ways, my point is, while Lincoln Riley should have made a lot of changes a year ago, it's not as though he could have made this change with Eric Henderson. And it's Henderson in particular. I mean, Doug Belk with Lanny Dominic Kelly, that's pretty big. That's pretty good. Doug Belk getting it done as well. But there's no question who the big home run hitter on this defensive recruiting staff is. It's Coach Henny. And that couldn't have been done a year ago. And just to kind of tie everything together, a final point on this, you know, a lot of people in sports think that there's never such a thing as a good loss. All right. But I'm here to say losing to UCLA, as much as Trojans will hate the Bruins and, and, and all that, that was a good loss. Because if we don't lose that game and if we don't lose that game in the way that we lost it, would Lincoln Riley have made all these necessary wholesale changes? Would he have had his come to Jesus moment? Sometimes things actually need to get a little worse in order for them to become better down the line on a long-term level. And so thank God, thank God USC fell all the way to seven and five instead of being nine and three and kind of in that middle ground where Lincoln Riley might have been able to rationalize well, if we run it back one more year or, or if we just you know, keep believing in our methods, we, we can get to the top. No, it needed to be bad. It needed to fall apart so that Lincoln Riley could start fresh, have this new philosophy. I mean, look at this. Lincoln Riley is becoming a, a defense first coach with USC really you know, developing a big defensive line pipeline. This probably we are probably not having this conversation and we're probably not having this wonderful Sunday live show, uh, a breaking news live show. If USC finishes nine and three last season, it needed to fall apart in order for it to be rebuilt a lot better. And a lot of the words you heard from um, from Lincoln Riley, you heard it. You, you heard he he felt it. He took it personally. And I, I wish I could really exact phrases he used. He basically said, okay, you know, yeah, I get it. You know, I, I, there's, you guys are saying this. Well, let me show you, right? And, and, and he is. And he went right about saying, look, everything we're going to do is going to be from the defense side of the ball. We're going to make the elite defense. And, and we're seeing it every single step. We're seeing it. We're seeing it. And we're seeing it. Obviously, we're going to need to see it on the field. But every offseason move that he's made so far, in my opinion, uh, uh, Matt, I'm giving him an A-plus so far in the offseason. As far as he said, I'm going to fix the defense. He's done about as much as he could. Going out and getting uh, uh, Ens Belk, right? Henderson, Lynn, you know, and bring bring in just you know just top talent at all levels of the defense, and 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 hang it on to Sean Nua, and now just the recruiting is starting to kick in. We got another call coming in. Thank you, caller, uh, for joining us on a Sunday afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Leon from Orange County. Leon. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what's on your mind? Hey, I uh, 
wanted to point out that USC has had a number of Georgia players going at least way back to 1981 when we had Chip Banks, wow. Joey yeah. Browner, uh, August Curley, and Keith Browner, all from uh, the Atlanta uh, area. So we're hopefully going to uh, continue that and, and get people from all over the country like we've always done. Yeah, this is a great call. Listen, thank you for reminding us all those players. Uh, right away, I didn't know they were from Atlanta, but all those names you just named off, I was a young man, but all those names was <laughs> very familiar to Trojan fans. Uh, and we'd be very happy to see if yeah, we could the repeat Browners that. Moved, the, the, the Browners moved from Ohio to Atlanta. Uh, you know, so when Ross and those guys were uh, coming into high school, they were out of Ohio. But uh, Keith and uh, Joey... Uh, had moved to Atlanta and were in high school there. Just amazing. What do you th what do you think right now? What do you think of of the recruiting staff that they put together, defensive recruiting staff? Do you think they're going to be able to to make this recruiting? I mean, it's great to have a we, listen. We started out strong last year, early, and kind of faded. Obviously, we know that that's part of that was because you know the product on the field. I don't think we're going to have that same issue the product on the field this year. But um, well, you know, what are your thoughts last about last year early? Last year early we played we played bum, uh, so we were going to start off strong, or, or, or appear to be strong, uh, no matter what. This year, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'll tell you like I told some of my friends, it's like McDonald's. I'm loving. It. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, no complaints. I, I I completely agree. Listen, I, I I didn't I knew that there would be an immediate. I did think there was going to be an immediate <laughs> reaction. I know if you watched USCJ yesterday and and, and um, Rusty and USCJ were kind of dropping hints that there's something really brewing and that we're going to hear some good news today, and, and now we're seeing it. But I had I did not anticipate it would be three commits, bam, bam, bam in a row, flipping one from Georgia and picking up a, the number one edge rusher in, in next year's uh, class. Just 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 an amazing day. Anything else? But by the way, thank you so much because you gave me a great idea for a story. So thank you for your information. I'll be rewinding this and checking that out again. Uh, any other uh, information or anything you want to share about today? No, that's all. Thank you. I'll let somebody else get you in. Thank you. Love these first-time callers. Uh, um, Leon, right, appreciate it. Hope you call again. All right, Tim. First all right, off, thanks. For, our, for all our viewers here at the Voice of College Football, got to check out Tim Prangley, all right, at Trojans Wire. He's been doing the dog work, woof, woof, uh, putting together all these articles on all these polls from Coach Henny social media reaction as well tim pranley has been putting in the work so reward tim for the work that he's doing by visiting his articles reading his articles at trojans wire and tim let's now hand it off to our guest because i have a lot of trojans wire writing to do this afternoon i am I thought you were just playing that that was that one that the chicken game with me. No, um, I, I think that we're uh we're gonna get some more phone calls. We say we're gonna do a quick one, but there's so many people on. I'm gonna keep it rolling uh, as long as we Go have ahead. calls, as long as we have people listening in. So um, I will bring, see you, you later Brian on. Around. Yeah. Yep. All absolutely. Right. Thank you. Yep. So we will continue on, Brian. Thank you for joining the show. This is uh Brian. He's got he's starting up his own channel with Real Talk with Brian. Brian, how you doing? My brother, my family. How you guys doing today? It's just a beautiful day to be a Trojan, right? Well, we're gonna listen. We're gonna make you dive right in, Brian. You're joining. You're playing wingman with me right now. We're gonna go hit some more phone calls. You ready? Right now, you got it. Ready? Okay, uh, caller, if you give me a favor, if you could turn down the volume on your computer or your TV, we'll give you a second. Great, thank you so much. Thank you for calling. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Johnny. I'm calling from Nashville, Tennessee, uh, and woke up this morning, saw the news right after church. And uh, let me tell you, it's been, I don't know how many years it's been since I've seen five-star defensive linemen, uh, now Asaya Gibson, Edge. I mean, it, it is, it's great to, like you said earlier, to be a Trojan. Uh, I'm already excited for the Michigan game, flying into that game. I'm excited for work tomorrow, as an SEC fan, to kind of throw it in their face because obviously living down here in SEC country has been tough for me the last couple of years. But uh, um, going back to what I heard earlier, I think they put a great defensive staff, and honestly, honestly, I'm worried because I want the staff. I would like for the staff to mesh, 
Um, and also, I would like for them to stay for a number of years. But I know that, you know, that once you start seeing uh, coaches produce, other programs or other NFL teams want to, you know, get put some money in there and, 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 and get the services. But I hope that USC is able to mesh with the defensive staff and, and the players, and they're able to do some great things for a number of years coming up. Yeah, that, that's going to be your key, but we know it's going to happen. I mean, that's why I was just in awe of – you saw Nick Saban go on that long run, right? He was able to replace guys. Why? Because they come right. in, they, they're successful at the college level, and then they become you know, coaching candidates or head coaching positions in college or, um, or maybe uh, coordinator positions and then also up into the NFL. So we know that's going to happen, but I think it's safe to say we're going to have these guys for a couple of years to make a title run and at the very least get USC up back to where it should be. Brian, your thoughts? Absolutely. We are totally rolling right now. And if you go back to last year and our ability to, to get Cameron Fountain and then piggyback in, you know, getting Isaiah, ooh, Isaiah Gibson, the crown jewel of this recording of recruiting class so far, you, I, you know, I just, I can't say enough about what we are doing right now. And, and you know, and I want to, I want to speak to our first caller, Daniel. Daniel and I uh, interact quite a bit on X and uh, Daniel, when he called in, he just couldn't hold back that, that rage, the, the Oklahoma rage, but you know, <laughs> between you and I, he is actually a friend of me of mine. And he, you know, he, we have intelligent conversations, you know, and uh, he, he's, he, he wants to root for SE. He just still has, a major resentment towards Lincoln Riley. And, you know, that's understandable. You know, Kobe Bryant said, if you don't have haters, you ain't doing it right. And uh, Matt was talking about failure. And I don't know about you, but if you've ever run a business, you have to do an inventory and figure out what's selling and what's not. And what wasn't selling was that defense. And uh, yeah, the proof is in the pudding, but we're in the efforts business and we leave, we leave the results to God. And, I got to tell you, uh, this, this coaching staff, this coaching staff is huge. This was monumental. And having Aaron Donald show up to uh, talk with Coach Han and, and, and these players was instrumental. You know, but we, we, have, to, we have to look at Lincoln, Lincoln Riley. You know, without him, he's the catalyst. And without his humility, then this isn't possible. You know, this isn't possible. Yeah, you know, there's there's no doubt that the key to this is going to be uh, Lincoln Riley's, and it sounds like he has that. Well, a lot of people said that he didn't. What was the phrase thrown around? They were saying that you know he was getting these um, these assistant coaches because, and he was looking more towards the offense. Now he's showing that he has, like I tried to talk about earlier, he has opened up. He's made it very clear. He was challenged. He was challenged by the media. He was challenged by the fans. Quite frankly, he's probably challenged. But you know, he, everyone has an inner circle of friends, and they're saying. You know, this defense needs to get fixed. And I think that he got tired of losing games where his offense is putting up 40 points. So he made the difference. He made the changes he needed to make, and uh, they're on their way. Uh, caller, I'm sorry, what was your name again? That's Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Johnny from Tennessee, right? So um, it must be rough being in, in uh, SEC country. So tomorrow when you go in there, you get to wear your SEC gear and talk about SEC recruiting. So I'm really happy for it. Anything else you want to add? The last thing I want to add, and – I don't think I don't know if y'all spoken about it already, but let's not overlook how well uh, I think I think his name is Ben Wiley, the strength the strength coach, the program, the the, the weight the players have been putting on Cameron Fountain, Raylon Shelby. I mean, just think about these four and five star recruits that they're starting to get in, what they can look like if they're already massive human beings, what they can look like in that type of system. It, it's gonna be, it's gonna be scary, and I, and and I'm all for it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm more than excited, just like you. These guys are, are have the Big Ten bodies, the NFL. Some of you guys came in with NFL bodies, and now they're getting the NFL um, development. They were talking development. And the good thing about that size is they keep talking about on the defensive line. He wants to have multiple fronts. They want to have versatility. They don't want it to pull guys off, right? They want to keep them on the field if they want to change their look. And so you're looking at a team that's going to be versatile, it's going to be well-developed by uh, NFL uh, coaches, and a coach is known to get guys into the NFL. Thank you so much. Absolutely excellent call. Be safe out there in Tennessee and wear that SE gear with pride. Appreciate you calling in, man. Fight on. Thank you. Fight on. Hey, guys, that opens up another call line. Uh, again, number 888-99-RILEY, 888-997-4539. Uh, great call so far. You guys, 
this is your show. We may not be the last, but we definitely were the first to say, we'll open our lines up to you on, on YouTube and you guys drive the show. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know how happy. Today's a day of celebration. We want to hear everyone celebrating these three huge pickups of potential new Trojans. I know it's a long time. Don't count your chickens, but I think these guys will stick with this, with this recruiting class. Good afternoon. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Leon Johnson from Orlando, Florida. How you guys doing? Leon, good to hear from you again. How you doing? I'm doing great this Sunday morning, uh, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. Great day to be a Trojan. Show? Great day. Every day is a great day to be a Trojan. But man, when you're landing four, you know, four and five star guys from the state of Georgia, it's another beautiful day, isn't it? Oh uh, yeah, especially when you're uh, flipping Georgia commit. Right. Yeah. So what is on your mind? Man, just basically what happened today. I mean, you know, a great day. We got Isaiah Gibson, uh, Dominique Kelly from the uh, 2026 class, Justin Ferry. Um, really good day for USC Trojans. Um, I don't know if you guys have been on Twitter, but these um, commits got uh, Landon Rink and uh, Jaquem Stewart and um, Marco Jones all looking in there. And they're like, hey, look at this. I mean, I think I might want to be part of this. And I see that um, Coach Henny's getting a lot of credit, which he should. But um, a lot of these kids committed when they were on campus. And I bet you looking at those recruits that we got in the 2023 20, class and Elijah Newby and Braylon Shelby, you know, what they look like in 2023 and what they look like now with that Benny Wiley uh, uh, weightlifting program. I bet you that was also one of the reasons why they uh, decided to commit to changing their bodies, to, you know, 15 to 20 pounds of putting on muscle. And they look like seasoned veterans. They don't look like, you know, freshmen or redshirt freshmen or even sophomores. They look like juniors and seniors, man. So I know we're giving Coach Henny a lot of credit, well-deserved. Benny Wiley and Coach New will probably deserve a little bit of credit, too. Yeah, no, absolutely. It starts from the 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 alignment. It starts from the the ground up, right? Brian, your thoughts on just we've talked about it a lot. I've got a couple of articles. If you guys go check it out. The links in the description. If you guys want to go hit up Trojans Wire, I talked extensively about how um, Benny Wiley has been not, not only the eye, past the eyeball test, but all these guys are talking about you know just how what an important part of their development and the transformation. These guys are up all 15, 10, 15 pounds of good healthy weight getting ready for the big 10. What are your thoughts on Benny Wiley, Brian? Oh, Benny Wiley, man. Uh, that gentleman took a whole lot of heat and uh, he didn't get out the kitchen. He stood there and took it like a man. And, uh, you know, you can only do what your boss tells you to do. And if your boss wants you to have fast spindly players and then that's what, that's what you build. But, you know, you look at what they did. That work didn't just happen last week. That work, these gains, golden gains, if anybody's ever worked out, you know it takes time, effort, and commitment. And that started right after they let go and turned out at the Holiday Ball. Yeah, and and I'm, I mean, we got some really good callers today, Tim. Oh, you know, man, listen, fantastic. we always get the best. We, we yeah. always get the best, Brian. Don't worry. They'll do our work for us. And just one thing you got to remember, you, you, know, you, you bring up a really good point, Leon. The fact that it's just not Benny Wiley, right? You you have other people. If you listen to um, the interviews after practice, uh, basically Brian Sh uh, uh, Brad, uh, Braylon Shelby told us he saw. Look, you know, it's not. You know, it's I, every morning I wake up and he gave. He called. He said Ms. Rachel, but you saw about uh, Rachel Suba. She's the she's the director of sports nutrition at USC. And these guys, you know, they're they're on a they're on a train table regimen. They're eating four or five times a day. They're bulking up and. You heard it said early on, Benny Wiley said, hey, look, our goals get big. It's not the medium 10. It's the big 10 we're going to. And so we need to get these guys. These guys are going to eat. These guys are going to lift. And there's no choice about it. And that's what a college athlete does. He gets his body right. Benny Wiley last year was being told to develop a certain body type by the previous uh, coaches. And now he has the direction. He has directed to say, hey, man, we need to bulk up and look. So it's not Benny Wiley. That's for sure. Great point. Leon, anything else for us? Man, um, I, I keep hearing, you know, like I said before, I keep hearing some rumblings that they're not done and there may be another commit that they haven't released their name yet. And I'm just hoping that it's uh, uh, Elijah, uh, uh, Elijah uh, Griffin. Oh. And um, 
<laughs> and we also got Thanos coming in pretty soon here. You see his tweet? Stewart. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. He, so, he, he opined. If, if you look at the last, if, if we, if this class pans out like it does and we sign these guys, the UFC defensive line for the next few years was pretty good. Yeah, they're building. There, there was no doubt about it. When USC and Lincoln Raleigh invested in a coach like Eric Henderson, that was not a cheap pickup, let me tell you. Uh, they're, they are showing that they are ready to compete. You know, the big problem was, as Trojan fans, we wanted our coaches and our coaching staff to, to compete with the Georgias and the Ohio States of the world, right? We wanted them to go head-to-head -head with Alabama and even to some extent, I uh, feel sick saying this, even the Oregon programs. But look at the resources that were being put into USC football. It wasn't just at a coaching level. This was a this was a seriously a university wide level from president, you know, Nikias all the way down to the the the, the strength conditioning uh, previously. And the thing we have to remember is is there has been a dedicated commitment from from of President Fult to bring in. You know, they brought in Bone. Bone said, "I'm bringing in Lincoln Riley." Lincoln Riley is now bringing in a defensive staff full of rock stars and an elite defense. And he says he's going to do it. And now we're seeing the divas. Now we are competing with the Ohio States, the Georgias, the Oklahoma, the, um, we're way beyond the Oklahoma, sorry, Oklahoma fan. You know, we're, we're well beyond that. So we're excited about the future. It's not going to slow down. Leon, thanks again. You're one of our, our most consistent callers. Appreciate you calling in. We love our first time callers. But we also like our return callers. You have a great weekend. How are you too, man? Fight on. Fight on, Leon. Okay, that opens the call for you guys. Sorry, the phone lines um, are not working properly. The call queue. So it's kind of like your old-fashioned party line. That's the number, 888-997-4539, 888-99-RILEY. Uh, that should be fixed next Friday. But for now, we're going old school. Um, so, Brian, you're talking about starting up your own channel. We were talking on uh, X the other day just about yourself. Just let us know about yourself and, and what you're looking to do. Hey, my name is Brian, and I'm a former football player, uh, unaccomplished, you know, didn't go and play D1 or D2 or D3, any of the, uh, the above. I'm a lifelong Trojan, you know, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, and I've been following SC since I was a little guy. Uh, my mom was a Georgia Bulldog, and my father was a Trojan, and, you know, so today's news is real big in my house. This is real big stuff. You know, and for the obvious, uh, we've been talking about this D-line and Coach Han quite a bit, but uh, you you were talking about the overall commitment. And, you know, we can't sleep on Doug Belk and we can't sleep on Matt Entz. You know, we brought in men of character. You know, these commitments didn't just come because we threw the bag at them. These commitments came because a lot of coaches in today's landscape and in the past – have been fraudulent, you know, mm -hmm. they want what they want for them. And when it's no longer good for them or something better comes along, they bounce. So their word means absolutely nothing. Well, you bring in this coaching staff, they don't just develop because they know some, which they do. They develop because they build relationships and those relationships are strong. It was never more apparent than when Aaron Donald showed up to endorse his coach you know, and when we're bringing in guys from Georgia, that's not happening by accident. You know, we got to remember Coach Hen played at Georgia Tech in Atlanta, you know, and those boys are big. Those boys are fast. And uh, it's it's going to be a beautiful day. And we, we're getting a lot of heat from a lot of other fan bases, and I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, they think that last year's performance is going to be indicative of what happens this year. But, Tim, you and I have been talking privately about the excitement of the players that we brought in last year and the year before that have been sitting waiting for their opportunity. And I believe, I believe I will step out on a diving board right now and say that we're going to hit it and we're going to hit it hard. Yeah. It's going to be, um, it's going to be Brian. It's going to be interesting to see how this season, again, it was great to bring, the names in it's great to bring the stars in it's great to do all these things but usc needs to make sure that they're taking care of business on the field that's going to be the biggest litmus test uh we, we've seen guys in the past that have been interested in usc and it kind of falls apart during the season uh again i don't anticipate this happening now but let's face it we have not seen this group of guys and this defense perform uh, in the coliseum so it's going to be i'm optimistic 
but again, I've seen, um, you know, <laughs> I've seen situations fall apart before. I don't anticipate any of that. I'm actually really excited. Let's hit some of these uh, super chats. First off, want to thank uh, Fight On. Thank you so much. Uh, you, again, that's you know that is uh, that's Brian's friend. And again, we're, this channel is open to everyone. Thoughts? I would again. I kind of cut that one off a little earlier than I normally would have, simply because today is the day we're celebrating. Otherwise, I'm I'm interested here because I like the banter. I, we don't want this to be some echo chamber. We want to hear from all the fans out there. We're joining the Big Ten. There's a number of great uh, fan bases out there. We do want to open up them. Obviously, this is a USC channel, and uh, we want to keep it positive today. That's why I kind of cut that one off a little bit quicker than I normally would. Uh, fight on again. Thank you for the, the additional super chat. Uh, appreciate your positivity. Appreciate all of your kind words, and, and more importantly, just appreciate you being here. And then Slap Happy, again, another huge supporter of the show. Always here. Appreciate it. Um, I'm seeing some light at the end of the tunnel, so pretty stoked, but want more. We all want more. Uh, someone said earlier that there was a third emoji that came out, but that third emoji is probably going to be for a Dominic Kelly. So we're looking for a fourth emoji. And Brian, we got another caller. Caller, Brian, thank you so much for uh, calling in. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Tim. This is D-Rock Irish. Calling hey. in from Southwest Florida near Fort Myers, Florida. D-Rock, how you doing? Another big supporter. Although he kind of supports <laughs> the wrong team, he has been a supporter of the show for a long time, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Appreciate every time you call in. How you doing? What, so what do you think about USC taking Georgia by storm? Hey, uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you guys on, on your pickup. I'm a college football fan first, actually, and then Notre Dame second. Maybe my second choice is a mistake. I'm not quite sure yet. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you guys are rocking it in the recruiting stage. Uh, Notre Dame usually starts out real quick. And then all of a sudden it's silence, and then you see other teams picking up later on. So um, you guys have been picking up some good ones here. And my hat's off. I mean, I'm not a USC fan, but you got to give USC credit uh, that every year they play, uh, I don't underestimate what they're able to do. So I know that you got other callers coming through, but my first, my only question tonight is, First of all, there's there's too many people out there underestimating what USC is going to do in the Big Ten this year. I uh, you know watching USC and Notre Dame over since 1970 and on, uh, I I've seen them go ahead and go head to head, and nothing's predictable. So with that in mind, and Big Ten, I believe is underestimating what USC can do this year. My question is, what time frame are you looking at for this year where you could say in the schedule where you could say USC is going to rock and roll for the rest of the year in the Big Ten what what key game is it the opener is it halfway through the season whereabouts do you guys think that you're going to be at you want to hit that really quick uh, Brian I got my idea I know absolutely and first and foremost I want to thank this caller because there's nothing better than a respectful rival you got to respect Notre Dame as a university and the class of individuals. Uh, if they weren't who they were, we wouldn't be who we are. Uh, and to address this uh, question, because that's the question, I personally think the proof is going to be in the pudding day one against LSU. Uh, they have a very similar situation that we do. And uh, I'm a believer in Coach Kelly. I, I think that uh, he knows how to put together a, a good product on the on the uh, field. And I think that with the emergence potential for LSU and with the vacancy and uh, turnover at Alabama, that LSU is going to be a force to be reckoned with and uh, Ole Miss as well. Uh, that game, that game is going to tell us a lot. Uh, I personally believe that the big house, uh, Michigan is going to be a game where we, uh, that, that, that stadium, if you've never been, uh, is not, Oregon. It is not Washington. Uh, it is not Georgia. And it is certainly not, you know, uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, that stadium is a very, very non-hostile stadium, and we can certainly win there. Uh, as far as Wisconsin goes, Wisconsin, I, you know, not to harp and, and throw anybody under the bus, but we know exactly what um, the last few years have looked like on defense. And with our new commitment on defense, uh, our 
very high end potential at the offensive line uh, with these recruits that we have that we've been shelving as well as uh, again coach that's no longer with us may he not be named and uh, I, I think that we're going to rock that game uh, Penn State uh, Penn State's going to be a game where they're going to oh, Brian, 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 Brian you just give us one <laughs> we can go through the schedule but okay well, so you can say with LSU? honestly, I, I think we got a 10-win season. I, I, yeah. I really do. And you think that we're going to know. And, and So I think that we're going to come out in that game. Uh, it's going to be on the road uh, in Vegas at uh, Allegiant Stadium, which is a small but very loud stadium. We know LSU travels well. Um, but I honestly think that our first test is, is you know, I think because USC plays well. Also, USC is going to travel well to Las Vegas. So it should be a 50-50 crowd. Should be, everyone should be pumped for the season. Uh, where I think that this team's going to test uh, medals to be tested is going to be a young offensive line, right? And a defense that's learning. Let's face it, as much as we know that Lynn is going slowly with this install and he's preached that he's going to teach it slow and, and, and bring it on slowly, that means early on it's not going to have all its wrinkles. And we know that a team, and they play the first, when you're installing a defense, it's not going to be as, uh, it's not going to be as optimum. That's one worry for the program. So I think actually as they go on the road to Michigan, although you're right, I, you know, the, the big house is not, exactly uh world beaters uh it's not a situation that we're going to have to where you think that you have um a noise like you would have in austin or the mus is going to put up uh for the utes it's still going to be an imposing place with over a hundred thousand people hungry and ready because we historically we have owned michigan that's just a fact wolverine fan you can argue with me all you want but you know basically in my lifetime when it comes to playing michigan in in the rose bowl it's going to be usc coming out ahead so uh, I don't think that we're going to have a lot of trouble, but that will be the first test. And that first test will be important to USC to make sure that they are ready offensively. What are your thoughts, D-Rock? Well, Jim, well, I think, I think LSU is going to give you a hint of what's going to take place. I'm hoping that you guys kick butt and take names later uh, in that game. I'm hoping for USC to go ahead and win that game. And then, yes, I think a confirmation would be that, that Michigan game uh, at, at their place. I think that would be a confirmation uh, that USC is really on their way back. And uh, once again, I'm not going to hold up the lines because I, I know you have all those callers coming through. But, you know, uh, Tim, Matt, the, the gentleman that's on tonight, I do respect what you guys are doing. I'm, I, I, I follow you guys, what's going on. And uh, actually, uh, Tim, this is the first time I've actually called into a show since Mark Rogers, which was about a year ago. So wow. <laughs> you're, you're in great company. Yeah, yeah, you're in great company, uh, uh, sir. Uh, so you keep up the great job out there. And, and once again, I still say that there's going to be a lot riding on that final game out there uh, when the Irish have to travel out to the Coliseum. It's a whole different atmosphere out there. Uh, myself, personally, I don't underestimate that game uh, one bit because I've seen what, what has happened before out there in the Coliseum. I never liked it <laughs> as far as the results for the most part. Yeah. And I think that that game is going to be critical for either one or both teams out there. And it's going to be a very intriguing matchup once again. So my thanks to all of you. And I know you don't like to hear this, but I'll say this. Go Irish. Yeah, no, listen, I have uh, utmost respect. My grandfather <laughs> was a big Irish fan. My dad grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, I was this close to uh, growing up in South Bend myself. My dad going to school on a parcel ride in Notre Dame. Thank goodness he came out here to sunny California and became a Trojan. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, and the rest okay. is history. But okay. yeah, I, I have, listen, there's one thing I will tell you this. Yeah, you, Notre Dame, like we give UCLA a lot of crap. You know, I have a lot of friends that went to UCLA. But when it comes down to it, there were so many games between USC uh, and the Irish that come down to deciding Heisman trophies, national championships, and the fact that you guys have an illustrious program. Uh, there's, there's no shame in losing to the Irish. And as you brought up, the good thing is this year we have the Irish here in the Coliseum. Going out to the Col going out to uh, to South Bend to play Notre Dame Stadium. That's that's never that's always tough sledding for the Trojans. You almost mark that off for loss. But in the years that we don't have the game in South Bend, those are usually the years that USC goes on a good run because it is difficult to go in. No matter who you guys have there uh, on the team for you, it's difficult for the Trojans historically to go in to South Bend and come out with a victory. But uh, D Rock, appreciate the call, man. Thank you so much for calling in. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. You you guys take care of yourselves now, right. okay? Stay strong. You too, bud. Thanks. All right, that opens the call. I'm really hoping the number right here. I do this on the fly. Oh, we got Brian back. My bad. So now we have our numbers. We can see it. Let me hold on. Let me switch the view here. There you go, Brian. We got you back. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no worries, guys. Okay, so that opens up the phone lines again, 888-99-RILEY, 888-997-4539. We are looking for calls from anyone. If you're a Trojan, you want to celebrate today, call in and join us. If you are a, a Big Ten fan, you want to tell us how uh, you're going to you're gonna stop USC Trojan domination of your conference, please let us know. That's what we're here for, uh, 888-997-4539. Yeah, you might have missed that call. We, we, he went into a little bit of depth about, uh, you know, USC and and we're I was talking about how difficult it is to play in, in South Bend, uh, but um, one thing I do know is that Juju Lewis. It, it, someone said Juju Lewis was visiting uh, visiting Boulder, right? I think it said CU uh, this weekend. I, I I don't think we're seeing that. You know, the thing with, with Dion, there's the big news is that Dion does not travel, right? So basically, he does not go uh, to and visit schools. He has people come to him. I think this is just a great opportunity for uh, a kid from Georgia, and that's where Juju Lewis is, to go and visit a guy that played for the Falcons for a number of years. That's a, one is a GOAT you know, cornerback. I, I, I'm hoping and I'm thinking this is pretty much just a visit to, to press the flesh with a, with a, you know, a GOAT at the position. Uh, we, I know that earlier you said you're talking about the, the gem of, of this class. That is definitely Juju Lewis. Uh, but yeah, these defense, you know, defense is sway games too. So it'll be interesting to see uh, one, I think that Juju Lewis, if it, what he and his father said early on about how they're looking for that word again, development, and you're not going to get a better developer of quarterbacks than Lincoln Riley. He's proven track record of getting guys number one draft picks in the NFL, or if you're not the number one draft pick, you're getting huge contracts like a Jalen Hurts. Uh, his development is gold. And if you want to get a Heisman Trophy, you know there's no better place. The guy has three already in, in a short career. Well, and when I was talking about the gem of the class, I was referring to defense because today's topic is defense and players from Georgia. Although he's also he's from know, Georgia, boy, he's from Georgia. But yeah, I'm stay. I was sticking to defense. Absolutely. Well, callers, again, we we go. I'll stay on as long as we got calls. We got 330, 70, 340 of you guys watching. Uh, about half of you guys are on uh, Twitter. You're over on Twitter X. Please do me a favor. Go ahead and uh, give me a follow. We will be going live. The only way you're gonna know is I always announce it on my on my Twitter feed. Uh, also, if you guys out there on YouTube, please make sure if you haven't already, please like the video. You guys really appreciate all of you guys being here on a Sunday. But it really helps out the channel and the show if we can get people to actually uh, hit that like button. Uh, got a number of, of also people that probably a bit camera shy or phone shy. Uh, if you guys want to drop some questions in the chat, I can also address those as well. Uh, we'll be on for a little bit longer, but I got to be honest with you. I don't, I'm not going to sit up here if nobody was calling. This is a call-in show, 888-997-4539. And again, the, the, if you want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, go and hit that subscribe button as well. Appreciate everybody being here. Sorry, Brian. Go ahead. Don't, don't forget to hit that notification button. That way you can be on time, you know, for the right. call-in show. Yeah, half the fun of these things is not watching them. And if you are watching them um, after the uh, after the fact, please leave a comment. Appreciate everyone's comments. It helps us to build a better show. We know what we're doing right, what you want to see more of, what you don't want to see more of. Um, and while we're here, I always do my obligatory uh, free Reggie statement, uh, free Reggie Bush. Listen, NCAA, you look like idiots. You were you made a stupid comment. You had a horrible investigation. It's going to look worse and worse by the year. Uh, there's absolutely zero reason. You guys are pretty much worthless as it is at this point. You don't stand up to any kind of amateurism. Uh, Reggie Bush, had, it was very clear that Judge Schaller said that the actual investigation itself was terrible and 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 it was malicious. Uh, you guys get out in front of this thing. You know, Charlie, Charlie Baker, you can get out of this thing right now and fix a lot of un. Uh, well, just get some low-hanging fruit and some goodwill because, quite frankly, nobody takes you guys seriously. Give this man back his trophy. You know, we can, we can venture in. We're talking about offensive players just a little bit. Uh, let's talk about two-sport athletes. Let's talk about the history of basketball players, football player hybrids, and their athleticism and their prowess on the field. You know, uh, comes to mind right now is Cameron, Cameron Fountain. You know, he was he was a stud basketball player as well. And I'm uh, looking forward to seeing him get lit loose on the field. And our tight end, our news tight end, Matthews, you know, he was a two-sport athlete. That should be fun to watch. 
Yeah, when we talk about two sport athletes, we also talk about watching. Uh, you had the first track meet at USC. I'm not sure exactly what Zachariah Branch ran, uh, but he 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 was running. He said at practice that he was going to be running. Uh, I definitely want to check to see what his time was. Uh, and then also, you can't talk about two sport athletes at USC without talking about Deuce Robinson. Uh, Deuce Robinson uh, is playing with the baseball team. The baseball team stacking up some wins. Had a massive win over UCLA. Uh, they 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 crushed the Bruins. And then, what, but when everyone thinks of multi sport athletes um, at USC, my first thought goes to uh, the gentleman that actually gave us time on this channel to interview was Anthony Munoz. If you guys haven't seen that interview, just do a search for USC Voice of College Football, Anthony Munoz. He gave us an hour of his time uh, out of high school. Anthony played uh, baseball, basketball, and football. He played baseball and football here at USC. And again, the rest is history. But yeah, you know, the USC has a history of multi sport athletes. You guys, if you want to, go ahead, drop your favorite multi sport athlete. In the chat, we could do that. Or again, last call for calls here, 888-997-4539. Uh, hit that like button if you're enjoying what you're seeing. Also, again, drop a follow on X if you're watching it on X or um, make sure you're subscribing if you are uh, watching it on YouTube. Oh, we Special got a call. Give me a follow too, Trojan in the Valley. I'll always be go. talking about stuff and bring it to Tim's attention. If Well, he already knows I get a lot of my stuff from him. Guys, a Guy's a professional, but the uh, interaction is always good with you guys and uh, the Trojan family and the opposing fan bases are always welcomed as well. Thank you, Brian. Hey, so caller, sorry. Uh, thank you for waiting. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm Kyle. I'm from Utah. Called a couple of times before, but one of the things I just wanted to say, and, uh, and it's going to probably sound a little awkward out there, is we've got to give Alan Alex Grinch some uh, undue gratitude because he filled a hole for Riley because Riley wouldn't just had a DC when he came to USC, but he filled a hole to where what we have as far as that coaching landscape now at USC, probably, but possibly not, never would have happened. And so now we have Lynn, we have Belk, we have Henderson, um, Aaron, and Ents and all these other coaches, all these pieces coming together. So it's not a thanks, good job, Grinch, but it's where he'll be filling a hole so we could find something better. And yeah. that's what really happened. And so it was unfortunate because it got a lot of us fans frustrated and quite dissatisfied, but also set up Riley to actually promise of saying, this is going to be one of the best defenses in the nation. And now we, might see some of that this year. My personal opinion is USC will um, have a top 20 defense, but if mm. I'm completely wrong, then I'm completely wrong. But seeing the track record of Lynn and just how these other coaches underneath him are just really um, invested in these young players and these young players are being invested in the coaches. And that's something that great coaches have always had going for them is that players believed in them. And I don't remember which was when Grinch was giving his uh, pep talk to the defensive players and the players just had none of it because they were just so fed up with losing and being thrown around like rag dolls that his motivation speech just wasn't motivating. And so that was quite telling, and hopefully Riley saw that a little bit. Like, okay, there's a problem, and we need to fix this. So, which he did. But I think this, uh, these, you grass from Georgia were excellent snatch. Um, and the way NIL is going, as much as I want Riley to fence off California, I think California is going to be hard one without the NIL really being stronger for USC. To keep California fenced off, but that's not the mindset of Riley anyway. So you know, though, well, let, let me let me jump in really quick. Hang, hang on one second. Let me let me jump in there, Kyle, really quick. Um, Go ahead. I just don't mm -hmm. think that's that's modern football anymore. And I'm gonna say this to you. You know, you talk about a guy who's who's a, a St. John Bosco graduate. I, I grew up here in Southern California. Love California high school football. I'm gonna be going to a bunch of games this year, like I do every year. Uh, I, I believe in our players. I, I, I tout California. I'm a, again, I'm, I'm a native Angelino. I, I love Southern California, but that's not really how it's working. It just, just the landscape of, of California 
um, the way the game's changing, the way the game is becoming more national. You know, we didn't have a bunch of guys. They didn't. You didn't have Alabamas and Georgias, and you know, you once in a while we lose some players to Miami. You know, there, we, there were some you know big time players back in the day. But in general, you know, you could easily lock down Southern California. I just don't think with the, in the age of NIL that it's really po it's possible to do that. I think what you can do is you make your list of the guys are your priorities and you make them your priority to your feeder schools and you go after them. But the, but the days of getting like 12 of the top 15 players in Southern California, I think, are probably over. I, I would love to be wrong, but I, I just see where that's going. And we're seeing a testament to that is, again, going into Georgia. Going into Georgia and picking up Cam Fountain, going into Georgia, picking up a Walter Matthews, going up into Georgia, picking up, you know, possibly Justice Terry, uh, Lewis, and uh, Gibson. You know, and, and um, it, it's just those days are are maybe changing and just like college football is changing, but but we'll see, right? You know, it's college football. The one thing about college football is, is and especially the thing about USC football is, is you never know year to year what you're going to get. And so it's, as it evolves, I think it'll shake out your thoughts on that, Brian, about local recruiting. You can attribute the, uh, the nationwide recruiting to uh, the rise of social media. The world has certainly gotten a lot smaller. There are always great athletes coming out of Georgia and Louisiana in the South. We just didn't know about them because local beat writers were writing about them. You know, these camps didn't exist, you know, up until a few years back. And, uh, you know, they, they th those kids aren't staying home because they know about other places. And California kids aren't staying home because they know about other places. And the explosion of college football and how big it's gotten uh, nationally and on television and whatnot that that's that's what that's about and of course Miami in the 80s 90s you know early 2000s rather sorry excuse me you know that was plucking players out of the community uh not far from where Miami was at you know and and to to address what the the caller said i absolutely agree that a debt of gratitude absolutely needs to go to Alex Grinch because you can't address a problem if you don't acknowledge the problem, you know, and we had to have the problem in order to be find the motivation to go out and do something about it. And when he addressed the players in the motivational speech, if you don't believe and you don't have faith and you don't respect, then you're not going to do. And I honestly believe that the, these kids that we got today, the ones that are coming in, the ones that have been here, who've been faithful, would run through walls for these guys because of the relationships. I mean, without them and just Taylor Mays in the holiday bowl, man, the respect level was big and they played hard and they played, they played to the abilities that they had uh, without, it wasn't a perfectly clean game. Let's be honest, but it was a lot better and you can attribute that to excitement. Those players were excited. And they're certainly yeah. excited now. And everyone feels like they got an opportunity. And if we go all the way back to the early 2000s with Pete Carroll, what was his mantra? Always competing. Always competing. Everyone's got a shot and they got to compete. And as far as California goes, uh, we're running spread offenses out here. We're, we're running seven on seven quite a bit. And, and we're just not developing trench play and – the wing T and all these, you know, old, old offenses, you know, the coaches are Brian, coaches you, are Brian, Brian, I got to, I got to bring you out here to, to watch uh modern day and USC play. And I'll change, I'll change your mind about trench players, but you're right for the, for the most part, California, uh, as far as for a while now, it's been a trend towards the lot. It's not in the numbers. There is talent and there are top flight talent. It's just not in the numbers you're going to find in Texas or in Louisiana or in Georgia. So, <clears throat> that is where you know everyone's going in Florida. Yeah, that's where people nationally. That's where Ohio, where do you think Ohio State's going? Ohio State's not pulling 15, 20 guys from Ohio. Michigan's not pulling 15, 20 guys games guys from Michigan. You have to recruit nationally if you don't have the 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 numbers. We have the elite players here in Southern California, but we don't have the depth of numbers that we're gonna need. And that's why I think you're seeing the investment and the success that this that this um staff is having in Texas. And in Georgia, great call. Anything else for us, Kyle? Yeah, and I was just going to say to kind of finish off is I wasn't so much saying that Riley needs to fence off California because I agree with you. That's really the 
three biggest states that generally have been the case with California, Texas, and Florida for uh, convention, convention of, uh, of talent. But like you said, it's kind of evolved. The landscape of football has evolved, and now it's you can find top talent almost anywhere. It may not be so condensed as the, these other states, but they, they're there. USC just picked up their fourth recruit from Georgia, four star, but they have two five stars and four two four stars out of Georgia. That says a lot about it's a, it's a whole yeah. Twenty twenty five right now is 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 all is four guys from Georgia, right? That's that's what that's what our twenty twenty five yeah. class looks like right now. Is four guy four elite guys from Georgia, and you can tell these guys are putting their work in over there. Absolutely. I mean, you got to look at our coaching staff too. So that was just we are represented in Texas, we are represented in Georgia, and we are represented in the Midwest just with our coaching staff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on once, 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 besides, um, Taylor Mays is actually originally from, from Washington, but he's been down here long enough. I would almost call him Southern California, but, um, yeah, I mean, really, realistically, you, when you lost Dante Williams, you know, we don't really have an LA recruiter on this staff. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're, you're not going to have that coach, I mean, coach, not. Not on campus recruiting, but coaches that can go out to campuses and recruit. Uh, we don't. But again, I don't think I don't think it's that big of a, of a trail when you have a guy. You know, I don't think there's, there's any boundaries for like an Eric Henderson. You know, if you hear the, if you hear um, Belk talk, you, you hear uh, Enns talk. These guys don't. You know, these guys know how to recruit, and they'll be able to get it no matter what. It's not going to be they're going to walk into you know uh, Orange County and not be able to recruit top guys from from the local schools. We have Aaron Donald. We have an icon from Los Angeles, uh, playing in Los Angeles, who just showed up, said hi. Unfortunately, he can't do off-campus recruiting for us, but I got, I got you. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good. So great call, Kyle. Appreciate you so much. Uh, again, consistent calls. Uh, we haven't heard from you in a while. Appreciate you calling back. Get to call back. It wasn't kind of by accident. I was looking at the phone number, deciding, and my thumb just kind of hit the button. <laughs> Touch sensitive. It's just like, well, I guess I'm calling in. We appreciate so. all your calls. It was a, it was a great call. We appreciate all of you being out there, and thank you so much for calling in. Well, thank you. All right, guys. So that opens up a phone line. We'll we'll hang out for a little bit. There's, I'm looking in, and I appreciate all of you guys. There's 385 people working, uh, watching right now on a Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Great day to be a Trojan. Every day is great to be a Trojan, but we've had so much great news. We've been promising you guys for a while that if we got some big news, we would go live. And the only way to know that when we're going live is if you can make sure that you are subscribed. Uh, go So if you want, if you enjoy the content, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right here. It'll let you know. And then hit that notification bell to let you know whenever we do go live. If you're watching on Twitter X right now, go ahead and drop me a follow. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, also, if you look at my feed, we're constantly letting you guys know when we go live uh, on there as well. Every time we do go live, there will be a Twitter drop as well. Yeah, don't sleep on Tim. If you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, then uh, definitely do what he just suggested because there's a lot of good content. He and Matt put out some fantastic stuff. And if you're if you're one of the people that's here because uh, I let you know that we're coming, and you know you can always count on me to. Uh, to plug all of my Trojan brothers. Yes, appreciate everyone being here. Thank you so much. And uh, but Brian was able to, to help fill the slot because uh, Matt is out there diligently uh, covering for Trojans Wire. He's looking, watching the basketball. Uh, I'm I snuck away because I did know that we couldn't let this event go by without uh, thanking you know promise the pro- fulfilling the promise we had to you guys that we would go live. But I will say this: I will promise you if we don't get a call pretty soon. Uh, Brian and I are going to wrap this one up. Going to check really quickly, see if there's any questions in, or comments in the in the comment section. Don't see any questions. Oh, where? So that was answered for you. Um, looks like things are, are are slowly winding down. Make sure you guys listen. Make sure that you are checking us out on Monday night. Monday night, uh, it will be uh, Trojan Conquest Live with Mark and myself. I believe Matt. We'll be watching uh, basketball that day as well. But then the following Friday, next Friday, we'll, we'll have this um, the scheduled show, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern uh, for the Trojan Conquest call-in show. 
we very well could have a number of other commits between now and then that we could talk and celebrate about. Um, anything else you have for us, Brian? Because it looks like, oh, wait, saved by the bell. We got a call. Hold on one second. Caller, thank you for calling in. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is uh, Mark calling from California. I'm a alumni walk-on at USC. Um, and I wanted to ask you, I, I, I've always heard this term, defense wins championship. Uh, what are your thoughts about, um, you know, the lineups for the, the first and second teams in terms of the talent that they're getting in the portal? Oh, I Brian, gotta hit- love Isaiah R- Rates. Gotta love him. You know, we, we we needed to plug where we needed to plug big time, and it's obvious. Gotta love that. And, and first and foremost, congratulations on being a walk on at SC. Uh, amazing. You know that that that's huge. That is absolutely a commitment financially, and they make you do a lot to do to sit there and be there and participate. So I got a lot of respect for you. Thank you so much for calling. Yeah, you must have some great stories. I tell you that uh, being there. Uh, Brian Kennedy Field, uh, enjoying enjoying the team, and because obviously without the walk-ons, you know, there's, there's a lot of work that gets. Well, a lot of people don't know the practice and the time that you guys put in the sweat. You may not be on the travel squad, you know, you might not get that playing time, but you guys are as much as part of the team and, and make the team go as, as anybody. I think the interior defensive line and the and the interior offensive line are going to be strengths that have been weaknesses in the past. Isaiah Rakes, like you said, Brian is a very very big man. Uh, coming over from Texas A&M. I think that he's going to do a great job to solidify that middle. We're moving into a conference that doesn't like to, you know, it's, uh, we're joking around about like, you know, who are the big quarterbacks going to be that we're facing? We're not, but we're going to face a lot of really big offensive linemen, uh, some really great running backs. Travion Henderson. Um, at, at, well, actually, we're not playing. Sorry, we don't play Ohio State, so we're going to miss those two. But you're going to see a lot of big backs in in the in the uh, in the Big Ten, along with lines are going to be li- leaning on. That's why it's really important, and you're going to see it. And they've talked about it, picking up some more depth on a defensive uh, interior, defensive line position in the middle there. Uh, I, although I think that we are really talented, we're not very deep there, and that's where they need to go. What do you think? What do you think, Mark? Oh, by the way, my you, you're asking me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I will always I'm gonna date myself. I was I was there with Charles White, Georgia Chica, Ronnie Lai. Um Oh, so you know Anthony Munoz. Those guys and yeah, and Anthony Munoz, yeah. Oh wow. Uh, what Mike a... Foster, Michael Harper, Anthony Gibson. Wow. Uh Charles White. Um it was it was it's really uh I I felt that, that looking back, that offensive line and that defense, Ronnie Ronnie Lott hit like a truck. And, and so did Dennis Smith, but it's it's. I really felt that chemistry during that time in that era, it hasn't been one that's been repeated in terms of talent, and then you know going to the NFL. Yeah, yeah. I so I, I, I just really uh, I appreciate you guys' input and uh, your perspectives on what's going on. Are you kidding me? We appreciate you calling to the show. Please make sure you call back again. Uh, I love to hear from you. Um, yeah, that we had the opportunity to talk to to like we talked about earlier uh, to um, Anthony Munoz, and and he went and we we're just we we're just naming the guys that played you know that played on those offensive lines uh, under Hudson Hawk and just how long, how many years these guys played in the NFL, how many of them went on to win uh, to to go into the the, the NHL, uh, NFL Hall of Fame. I we wasn't talking about when USC would not get All American after All American, which you know some programs do. USC was lining up All Pro tackle after all pro tackle or, or, or linemen actually on that offensive line year after year. And there's, you left, forgot one name. I mean, then you have Heisman trophy winners, like, like Charles white, Marcus Allen running behind. You have Charles, you have, you have Marcus Allen playing fullback for Charles white. Um, probably as Robinson said, the toughest Trojan of all time was, was Charles white. But I, I could, I could listen to you for hours. If you want to talk someday, call in, please do. Uh, we, we could talk about um, those teams because like I said, I knew it. I knew you'd have some great stories. I, we talked to uh, John Jackson a lot. His dad, John Jackson, uh, John Jackson Jr. played receiver at USC, the, uh, who's a friend of mine. But his dad was the the running back coach during that era as well for Robinson. Just um, amazing teams that you guys had. And, and I'm sure you have some incredible stories to share with everybody. Thank you so much. And I, I look forward to calling back. Please, please do. Thank you. It's an honor to hear from you and, and definitely do call in. Thank you so much, Mark. Wow. 
cool. Yeah, so you guys fight on the mark. Um, I'm ready to wrap it up because I'm sorry. I don't know. If, I mean, people out there are going to, I'm just kidding. If they want to follow Mark, but that, that was an excellent call. Uh, you guys, I'll give you one more chance to call in. Uh, we were blessed to hear from uh, a member of uh, one of the greatest that, you know, this, that's 78 uh, national championship team. Um, they split that title with Alabama, which is kind of crap because that team went in. It wasn't Tuscaloosa. Uh, I think it was Birmingham. I can't remember. They go in Alabama and they beat that Crimson Tide team on the field. And the 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 writers, I'm not sure it was the AP. I think it was the AP writers had the nerve to give them the title over USC. Uh, it was truly a truly robbery. They split the title, right? They, I guess, you know, I think uh, the coach's poll was one, UUPI or coach poll was one, AP it was split. But how do you go into some, not only they, they beat them, they beat them on their home field and they had the nerve to give them a share of the title. I, I think this day is absurd, but um, pretty amazing to hear from some USC royalty there. Uh, I don't get hung up on, you know, how many times you start or whatever. You, may, you play USC football in any capacity in my book. You're, you're an amazing human being and athlete. So uh, fight on to Mark there. Well, we've had a great show. We've had an amazing show. I'm going to give you guys this. This is the this is the buzzer. If you want to call in, we'll appreciate any phone call. We have still have 384 of you guys out there. Uh, if you are on YouTube, do us a favor, hit that like button. I, I know you hear from everybody. It really does help out this show. Also, if you'd like to see more shows like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the notification bell so you know if we go like today, this wasn't scheduled, we go live, you'll know you get a notification when we're going live. And if you're watching, which a number of you are on Twitter X, please go ahead, do me a favor. Uh, give me a follow. That way you'll know when we go live again. I promise that we're going to start um, broadcasts on both as well. So appreciate all of the calls. Appreciate um, a number of calls. We got calls from uh, Brian in uh, San Fernando Valley. Oh, no, it's oops. I got the wrong list up here. My bad. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what happens when I'm trying to run the show by myself behind the scenes and I get the wrong list of callers. Uh, up we there. had Dan Here's our Dave from Oklahoma. We had Aaron yeah. from India. We got Daniel. We had Daniel. We got Aaron from India. We got Leon from Orange County. Johnny from Tennessee. D Rock Irish from Florida. Kyle from Utah. And that last one from Mark from California. Uh, you guys are absolutely the stars of the show. I look forward to these call these shows more than any of their shows I do. Uh, just simply being able to reach out. I just feel like I'm on campus and we're at, we're at a tailgate and we're all talking about the team that we love. So. Make sure you guys are following. Make sure you guys are subscribed uh, and, and join the show. Don't feel free. You got one more chance to call in. You got, I'm looking at my phone right now. We get one more call. We'll hang on. Otherwise, we're going to call a day. Brian, thank you so much for showing up here. I really appreciate you joining us on the big celebration day when, when USC picks up three outstanding recruits from, from Georgia. Um, well, commits from Georgia. Uh, we have a lot of people on Twitter saying, yeah, they're not going to stick. But I think they're remembering sometimes where we had some Georgia commits that were uh, under different coaches. And I just think something, the reason when you, when you want to play quarterback for a guy um, like Lincoln Riley, when you want to play line for a guy like Eric Henderson, those are the kind of commits that are going to stick. This is not something that they're choosing. They, they, made, they did their homework and they know what these two guys could do. The key here is, is NIL. A lot of kids are wrapped up. But if you have a kid just solely wrapped up in NIL, that's probably not a guy you want anyway. These guys want to come, they want to get developed, and they want to go to the NFL. And that's the kind of guy that you want to have on your team. Brian, your thoughts on today as we wrap up? Oh, today was excellent. Today was excellent. Uh, my my thoughts, uh, the only thing I, I, I might piggyback on is a big thank you for the opportunity to come in. Uh, you and I talk privately. And uh, for those of you who are watching or listening, just know that Tim is always available. He's a real one. He's, he's a diehard. And if you are a diehard, like we are diehards, and you can't get enough college football, and you're super excited on this day of celebration about these recruits, you can always go visit or go watch our, our friend Gable on, on the Trojan Blade, who just released not one, but two videos on these guys, and it goes in, in depth. And uh, we're big supporters of the Trojan family, and we're huge fans of yours, and Tim and I met on Twitter. So guess what? And there's what? more out there. Remember that this community gets goes wide. You got USC Jay, who I, if you guys want to go watch his, uh, Rusty also is a big supporter of this little circle we have. Uh, you know, uh, fight, uh, Arrogant Nation, fight on Rusty on Twitter. Um, you just talked about Trojan Blade. You got the guys also, you got the um, the Light the Torch podcast. Those guys oh, yeah. are awesome. There's so many opportunities. And obviously you have the, everything going on on three and 247. 
But, you know, go out there, support the local guys, the independent guys that are out there trying to give you the content. Um, I'm going to be out at practice this week. It's going to be an early one on Tuesday. I'll be snapping some pictures in the dark probably because I think it's the 530 start. God knows what that's going to be like. Thank you for reminding me, Slap Happy Car Sports, always putting out up to the minute recruiting stuff for you guys. Make sure you're checking him out. Love his style. Love every, love his passion he brings for USC football, even though we <laughs> – we all used to argue the show. I don't, maybe that's why he doesn't call me anymore. Uh, but Carter's stuff is completely awesome. Make sure you're checking that out. But Tuesday, look for some pictures uh, on, on Trojan's Wire. Hopefully, we're updating some of our photo library. We're kind of uh, having trouble with some of the newer players. But we're, I'm going to be out there, um, and we should have some great interviews uh, and some great pictures for Tuesday, and then also practice again on uh, on Thursday. Remember, we have the show Monday night with Mark Rogers. Make sure you're checking us out there. And then also Friday, uh, Friday evening, we'll be back here. So make sure you guys have subbed up. Brian, again, yeah, I enjoyed the conversation with you. And that he's, it is true, you guys. Hit that follow if you guys are out there in, in Twitter X. Um, I, I love engaging. Also, I'm thinking about putting an email up there because a lot of people, uh, there are some of the older gentlemen like my dad out there that don't have Twitter, that don't have Instagram. Um, I'm quickly going to get us an email. So that way, if you guys have questions, I'm not leaving you guys out as well. Drop me questions or anything you want to know about the team. Uh, I'm always uh, available to chat with you guys. So much uh, interaction and it's so much fun for me. So um, until then, until Monday, uh, that's Brian. I'm Tim. Thank you to Matt for stopping in really quickly. Make sure you're checking out all of our stuff on uh, Trojans Wire. There is, well, today there's like six or seven stories that went up because of what's going on today. Make sure you're checking everything out. Later on today, I know Mark Rogers at 6 o'clock on the main channel is going to have a show. I'm not sure exactly what the title is on that, but uh, appreciate everyone being here. Uh, it's very humbling to look out there and see 382 people are tuned in to watch us. Um, and, and thank you all so, so very much. Thank you guys to all the people that donated to the show. Fight on, thank, fight on, thank you for the two super chats. Slap happy. Thank you for yours as well. Uh, you guys all stay safe. Have a blessed Sunday. And uh, go Trojans. Fight on, you guys. <laughs>